Well, let's get away from the NHL and pro hockey right now. Let's start all the way back to junior and Cape yep. Breton. You were drafted by Cape Breton, correct? Yeah. So yep. talk about that feeling growing up in that part of the world and being drafted by that team. When you were a kid, did you go to the games? Were you a fan of the Eagles growing up? Yeah, I mean, yeah, big, that's that's what we had to watch. Um our, our family never had season tickets, but a, a good friend of mine, uh, him and his family always did. And it was always, uh, we always went to the games with, uh, I went to the games with him and my, my, my friend Brett and his dad was usually where we went to the games with. And, yeah. Um, it, you know, it, we were always busy out playing hockey anyway. Like that's who we were. We were those guys. We were like the, you know, when World Juniors came on, we were those guys in the backyard, you know, the, on the pond. And we were the Eagles. That's who we were. <laughs> and it was Eagles versus Mooseheads for us, and, you know, in the driveway. And I think, uh, it kind of started there, and that's kind of where you fall in love with, you know, your your favorite players and guys you cheered on for. And um, I was obviously fortunate enough to be drafted by the Eagles, uh, being from Cape Breton. Yeah. Um, the draft was in Cape Breton actually when it happened, so that was uh, it was kind of neat. But uh, for me, I was I was 15 at the time, and I had it was uh, uh, Steve Dixon. Um, Culligan and Shepard. They were no, sorry, Dean Willette. It's who it was. Dean Willette, Culligan, and Shepard up on stage to pass me my jersey when I was drafted. So, for me, like now, like they're you know they're all good friends of mine, and, and it's kind of cool. But back then, it was that was that was it. That was awesome, right? Like, just for them to pass me that jersey was, uh, um, it was at that point it was the best moment of my career in hockey, and I you know and I still remember it. I, you know, there's pictures of it. Uh, we still laugh, but I had the braces and everything. It was, we still laugh about it with those guys. But, uh, <laughs> You know, that's just kind of where it all started. And uh, obviously I was fortunate enough to, to play a couple of years in Cape Breton. You know, I lived with my parents until um, I graduated high school and then I got traded. But uh, it was a pretty um, ideal situation to get to, you know, go to high school with my buddies. And, you know, I didn't have to move away from home until I was 19. Oh, so lucky. Yeah. Did you go to the Quebec PB tournament by any chance? Were you? I didn't. No, we no? had, a, no, we, uh, North Sydney actually went the year oh, that. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, is there a story behind that? Did you guys want to go? Like, what happened there? I'm not sure how they how they picked it. I mean, uh, personally, I think we had a better team than they did. But, <laughs> you still hold grudges. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it was. Uh, it would have been cool to do. I went and watched it when I played for the Ramparts, and it was it was it was oh, so yeah. cool. Yeah, it was so cool. Just the uh, the rink was like ten thousand people in the rink to watch these peewee yeah. kids play, and um, obviously that's why it gets talked about so much. It's just such a cool. They, they do such a great job putting that tournament on. And back when you were in Quebec. You guys were in the old, the Pepsi, Col yep. the yep. Colise, yeah. Yep. That's I, didn't, I didn't even get to see the new rink yet. So the, my last, actually, I think the year after I left was their last year in the Coliseum when they hosted the uh, the Mem Cup. I'm pretty sure they hosted it at the Coliseum. I'm not positive. But, was uh, Patty Wall your coach? He was, yeah. I had him for two years. What's he was, like as a coach? Uh, he, was, he was awesome. I loved him. You know, I think uh, on the younger guys, as as, as most coaches are, that's, you know, they're harder on the younger guys coming in, trying to kind of show them the way. But uh for myself, it was, uh, I loved it. You know, I don't think I'd be the professional player that I am if it wasn't for him. He kind of diversified my game a little bit. Um, I never played center until, uh, you know, obviously you do a minor hockey, you play all the positions, but okay. until I, you know, when junior, I didn't play center until I went with him, and he, he kind of gave me the role of, you know, if you want to be a better player, you have to be able to play all positions, and that, and that's what I did. You know, I played uh, left wing with uh, Grigor Anko, and then I ended up playing center with, with that line as well. So I kind of learned how to... Uh, you know, to figure out my game. And that's kind of where it started for me as to figure out what I have to do to get to where I want to be. And it's kind of, um, you know, not necessarily going to be a 30 goal scoring in the NHL playing right wing. It's, you know, whatever that coach asks you to do, go do it, you know, and yeah. figure out a way to stay in the lineup. And that's, you know, so far what I've been able to do. It's an interesting how he was a goaltender turned into a coach. You yeah, know, I sure. guess you see, he's almost, he's almost like a catcher in baseball. He sees the game so well. Yeah. He's all the way back there, and he sees how things lay out. Right, you see everything happen yeah. in front of you, right? I, I don't know. I mean, this could be rumors or whatever, but I, I don't know many goalies that like playing for you know a, a coach like that just for the fact that yes you know it's kind of yeah. uh, he was the best goal you know one of argue one of the best goaltenders of all time, and you know try to. I, when when I had him in Quebec with the goalies that we had, we had good goalies. We had uh, like Louis Demang and. Uh, Francis Broussard, but it's tougher for him to try to coach that. You know what I mean? Like he's like the the best goalie of you know of yeah. of his era or whatever. And then these younger goalies are coming up, and it's they want to they want to learn from him, but it's harder for him to try to teach that. I guess he kind of stayed away from the goalies, just like Dreski coaching right? Arizona. Correct. Same thing. Correct. Can't coach yeah. the forwards. Right. It, it's tougher to do. Right. Yeah. And I think uh, he was he did a great job with that organization. You know, from you know part owner or whatever and uh, coaching. I thought the way he handled his players um, in that. Um, 
environment. That's it. Exactly. The environment's a good word for it. Um, just with, you know, you have, we average like 12,000 fans a game. It's a huge city. It's a, you know, it's a big organization for a junior team, right? And Gentile I, and I came think, on and said all that stuff. Right. Yeah, and, and it was an odd, like they have so many behind the scenes things going on there that other organizations don't need, right? Because just like they're small market teams and whereas they're, they're in a NHL city, right? Like they're in a city that could very easily have an NHL team and um, I think he did very well handling himself and his players. Yeah. I liked when Gentile came on and he was talking about some of the behind the scenes aspect of it. it's not even anything like a junior team because he played for Cape Breton yep. and he also played for Quebec and it was just two different worlds, media yep. side, fan side, public side. Yep. It just, you almost feel like you're a pro. And he said he went in there at 16 and it was just a different ball game. Yeah. Just it's, everything. Uh, Professionalism. It's, it, they treat it like a, an NHL team. They do, you know, they, they're giving you lunch every day after practice in the rink. Um, you know, all of our school for the English guys was at the rink. So you got to the rink in the morning, you practiced, you ate lunch, you did your school, and then you head home. But, you know, it's just everything about it. They have, like, their own drivers to drive kids to school and everything because, you know, it's a bigger city. You can't just, you know, get a buddy to come pick you up when they're living, you know, half hour across the city with traffic and everything. So it's yeah. a different it's a different, uh, different approach to the, the organization for sure.